Part 2 Chapter 12 February 15th, 1943 Old Town Krakow The meeting place was at the base of the ruined statue of Adam Mikowitz in Krakow's Old Town District. This was where we laid the wreath the night we attacked the cafe nearly two months ago. I wondered how many Poles saw the wreath before it was removed. Old Town today was nothing like the square where I used to play as a child. Now enormous red flags with black swastikas hung from every balcony and topped every flagpole. The trumpeter who used to play the first notes of the Polish anthem every hour from St. Mary's Church had been silenced. The square was thick with the usual shoppers and businessmen, but now they cautiously mixed with the Nazis and other German officials. I never stared, but I always looked. I accidentally bumped into one officer as I was jostled along with the crowd. He was a tall man with dark blonde hair and a face that might have been handsome if it were not the face of a murderer. Cy Vornsky, he shouted at me. I mumbled an apology in his language and moved away with my eyes down. There, were se there are several ways to warn someone to be careful in German. The meaning he chose was specific that it was dangerous to have bumped into him. I smiled despite myself. Perhaps it was dangerous for him to have bumped into me. My bag was loaded with weapons and I knew how to use them all. But that wasn't the purpose for these weapons, nor was this the place where I wanted to make my last stand. At one time, I would have questioned the wisdom of a public meeting especially near the heart of where the Germans set up their government. But Akiva had learned that as long as we did nothing to draw attention to ourselves, we were less suspicious meeting beneath the noses of the Germans than in quiet corners on the outskirts of town, where, we'd be get, where, be, <clears throat> where we would be expected to gather, where they'd be watching for us. For a distance, I saw a figure standing near the broken statue, and I blinked a couple of times, certain that could not be my contact. Because even in wartime, facing the extinction of my people, surely fate could not be this cruel. In my mind, I felt certain I would see Reuben or Hanusa here, or even some other, some, someone from another Akivasau. Not Esther. I was glad that she was still alive, of course. I'd be glad for any of us to still be alive, but this was different. This was the person with whom I was supposed to complete a mission, a person I had to trust with my life. That simply wasn't her. It would never be her. She approached me as if to offer a hug of greeting, but I stepped back and lowered my eyes. Two seconds into our meeting, and she'd already drawn attention our way. We wouldn't hug or speak in hushed tones with our heads huddled together. We wouldn't let our eyes dart around as if expecting to be shot at any time. She was dressed in slacks, and so was I, which could have been better planned. There would, have, there would be other teens in slacks, of course, but... Most girls wore dresses, especially those trying to pass themselves off as respectable middle-class poles. Looking around at nothing in particular, and certainly not at her, I asked, You are here to give me the next assignment? She shrugged. It's our assignment together. Of course it was. I hoisted the bag on my shoulder again, trying not to show how heavy it was. Which way are we walking? If she was coming with me, then we wouldn't talk about the assignment here. I just wanted to get moving. She was more prepared with an answer than I might have expected. Train station. Taking the train? No, not there. Not with you. Even with Polish looks, it was dangerous to board a train in Krakow. The Gestapo employed Jews to keep watch for other Jews attempting to leave the city, figuring 
they could better identify one of their own. Their quota was 10 Jews per day, and failing to meet the quota could result in their dismissal. Dismissal often ended in the death camps, so they were well motivated to spot us. Esther looked, shook her head. I can get through the train station. Chaya, I can. We'd see about that. How far are we going? Loads. I drew in a sharp breath and forced myself to release it without visibly panicking. Our leaders had told us nothing to go, had told us never to go to Lodz. It was particularly dangerous to smuggle anything inside the ghetto there. And even if we were successful, the OD was brutal and the Judenrat was corrupt. Lodz was one of the worst. You didn't get these orders from anyone within Akiva, I said, my tone accusatory and cold. Dolek, the Drangers, they always refused us permission to go there. Dolek is dead, Esther said flatly. I don't know how the Gestapo found Akiva's bunker after the cafe, but Dolek and a few others refused to be taken alive. Everyone else in the bunker was either shot on sight or arrested. I suspected Dolik's life had ended the way he wanted it to, in a final flash of defiance. But the news settled in me like an unbearable weight. Few men were his equal. Esther continued, The Drangers are in Montelupich pri prison. Most of the other resistance fighters who survived are there too. Montelupich? My gut twisted. Montelupich prison was a terrible place designed and run by sadists. If the Drangers were there, then they had experienced torture worse than anything I could imagine. And even what I could picture turned my stomach. They would be kept at the edge of death in an attempt to make them talk. But I knew the Drangers. The Nazis would get nothing from them. Shimshan cared more for the resistance than his own life. Gusta was tougher than I ever hoped to be. If anyone could survive the prison, it was them. Esther gave me a moment to absorb the, her news, then said, Antec has picked up the reins of Akiva. He's hiding in the forest, trying to reorganize the resistance. Antec was only a few years older than me, but had been high up in the Akiva organization from our early days in the resistance. I didn't know him well, but if he had taken over, then orders were orders. I began walking toward the train station with Esther close by my side. We had already been standing still too long, talking for too long. How can Antec reorganize with only you and me? Are we all that's left? No but there aren't many of us. There are other resistance organizations throughout Poland, though. Antec hopes, hopes to start one in Lodz. That's our job, to get in and determine if there's any chance to start a group there. Feeling the weight of eyes on us, I laughed as if she'd said something funny. She echoed my laugh, though it was forced and false and much too loud. If we are going to do this mission together, then I, tr then I train her, just as I'd been trained. I'd already begun making a mental list of things to speak to her about when we were alone. Don't walk with your hands in your pockets. It looks like you're hiding something. Don't look down or avoid eye contact or stare. In short, she shouldn't do anything that she's, that she'd been doing until now except that Esther had survived this long, so she must be doing some things right. I've brought a few weapons, I said, but it's not enough for an uprising in a ghetto as large as the one in Lodz. Maybe it's a s enough to start. The walk from Old, Tra Old Town to the train station took only ten minutes but it was 10 minutes of hearing the pounding of my heart and trying to ignore the warning thoughts racing through my head. I often tra traveled by train to get from one ghetto to another, but I traveled alone and I was never comfortable during the journey. 
Train cars were a space I couldn't control. What if the wrong per person sat next to me? What if they were suspicious and contacted one of the German soldiers inevitably riding along? I jump off trains a few times during raids, but here, on a passenger train, that sort of behavior tends to look suspicious. It was harder now with Esther. Instead of the swept back style that was the current fashion, she wore her hair around her face, hoping to be less visible. But if anyone did look, they'd surely wonder if she might be Jewish. All I could do was hope that met my more Polish looks would direct attention away from her. Since I was older than Esther, no one would think twice if I managed the money and tickets. I also had a pretty face, another weapon in my arsenal, and whenever necessary, I used it as such. If I was the more exuberant, friendlier one, I hoped Esther would escape the notice of the other passengers. At one time, Jews and Poles rode the trains as equals, often side by side, often as friends. Then as the laws changed, we were, cha we were charged more than the Poles for the same seats. Then we were banished altogether. If any other Jews managed to sneak aboard this, this train, they wouldn't want contact with me any more than I did with them. I'd brought with me most of the cash from the safe house, so it was easy to purchase the tickets. I did leave a little money behind on the slight chance that any other Akiva members returned there, but I saw now that it had been a foolish decision. A pit in my stomach became a reminder that nearly all of the Akiva was gone. No one would return to that safe house. Why are you young ladies going to Lodz today? The cashier friendly, the cashier's friendly tone suggested it was a routine question, but I never took that for granted. To visit our grandmother, I replied. At the very same time, Esther said, it's our home. It will be our home now, I quickly corrected, giving Esther a small, quick, a small kick to keep her quiet. Once we were alone, I turned to her and hissed, from now on, unless the question is specifically directed to you, I will answer. You never tell someone you're headed home to a place you don't know. What if he had asked what street you live on? What if he fr he's from Lodes and asked about your family? Her lower lip quivered. You're right, Chaya. I'm sorry. I wasn't angry with her. Not really. I was angry at myself. I didn't like me this way. Cold and harsh. Before the war, I wouldn't, I would have taken her hand and told her it doesn't matter if she makes mistakes. We all do. And it can't be all that bad. But this was wartime and everything mattered. Even small mistakes could be catastrophic. Encourage a resistance movement in loads? Is that all we're assigned to do? I asked. I asked. She nodded, but wouldn't meet my eyes. She was holding something back. What else? I continued. Tell me, and then you can go. I'll do it alone. My tone was calm, yet she recoiled as if I'd slapped her. What? No, I'm coming with you. You want to come, but we both know you're not up to it. There's no shame in admitting it. I won't admit it because it's not true. I can complete this mission. So can I, alone. It's safer anyway. Sometimes the best thing you can do is get out of the way. What were Antec's exact orders to you? She stiffened her spine and pinched her mouth shut clearly trying to keep her emotions in check. Finally, she answered, our orders are to go to the ghetto in Lodz together and see if there's any chance for a resistance movement there. You bought two tickets for the train. One of them is for me. I groaned and walked with her towards the train platform, carefully looking out for anyone who might be watching us too closely. If anyone seems like they were, I crossed between them and Esther, blocking their view. Otherwise, we remained separated enough that, in, that few people would think of us as traveling companions. I didn't feel like a companion to her anyway, not when she was withholding information from me.